Hello friends out there, Robert Ham here, and today I'd like to talk to you about the most asked questions I've got since picking up and using the Blink X-T2 system for my home security. It's been a long, fun time, a little over a year now that's gone past, about a year now, a year and two months, three months so far, it's so about 15 months, and I've really enjoyed this system quite a bit. This is not a sponsored or paid review, Blink didn't send me any of this. Uh, in fact, other camera manufacturers have contacted me and asked me to review their systems. I have not accepted any systems to review because I'm quite happy with Blink, and that should tell you a lot. We're taking all these questions straight from the YouTube comments, so you don't have to scroll down, but if you'd like to ask yours, go ahead and post it here. This was from my one-year review, and the most common question asked is, how long does the battery last? And I guess that has a couple different parts. Since I've used the cameras, uh, and I've got two cameras since I went from a one to a two camera system, that has changed my uses scenario. And since the coronavirus hit, that has changed my use case scenario. Generally, I'm home quite a bit more, so I don't run the cameras 24 seven like I was when I originally picked up the system. When I first got the system running one camera 24 seven, getting about 80 notifications a day, believe it or not, then uh, the, the batteries, one set of batteries, two lithium batteries would last me roughly six weeks. So what that actually meant was that over a period of time in about a year, I would use about, hmm, about 12 batteries, you know, so about six different sets of batteries, somewhere in there, maybe 14. And uh, so you put that to your, to your own thoughts. That's about $15 a year in battery cost. Currently, I'm only running it at night from a certain time in the evening to a certain time in the morning, late morning, uh, late evening to late morning. So it's running about 12 to 13 hours every day and that has cut down my notifications quite a bit. I only get about 12 notifications a night. Most of them are from the bunny rabbits, believe it or not, and a couple of dog walkers in the morning, which means that now my batteries last quite a bit longer. Since I've done that, one set of batteries has lasted in each camera easily four months because I put them in about four months ago when I started this new schedule and they're still going strong. So I hope that helps. Got another question, two-factor authentication for the app. Does Blink use that? Not that I'm aware of. However, the app can only be downloaded on your phone and uh, I can't access it from anywhere else. So unless you have given someone else access to your phone uh, or, and that account number or whatever for your Blink and your special serial number, then they would have a hard time uh, getting into it. So uh, security seems to be pretty good there. But don't forget that all of this stuff is hosted on a, on a web server. It's not hosted locally, which means that I don't put a Blink camera anywhere I would want someone that could uh, break the security measures that Blink has in place for their cloud storage to be able to see into my home. So if someone's looking into my cameras and they see my outside gate, that's fine. But I don't have any cameras in my home where they could actually see into my common areas or anything like that. So we've got another question. Could you quickly set up a Blink camera inside your house if you wanted to monitor your home while you were gone? Actually, I think this is a great option and this is something that I do. I don't keep one in my home all the time, uh, especially when you know my children and my, my family is living here. But when I do go on vacation, I do actually change the setup of my cameras from my outdoor to an indoor and an outdoor setup, and that's pretty cool. Yes, because the cameras are Wi-Fi and they connect to your network, you can very easily move them wherever you would like without changing any wires. Nothing happens, you just move the camera. You may need to change your activity zones if you want to make sure that the monitoring is fine and stuff like that. You may need to change the sensitivity settings, but that's all done via the app, and the app is easy and works quite well. Got another question along those lines is, could you put a Blink camera in your car while you're home in order to uh, monitor your car? in case something were to happen to it. Yes, actually, this is a very great idea and uh, was a suggestion that I've, uh, I've looked at implementing and I wish I had done it uh, a couple of weeks ago. There was apparently someone in the neighborhood going through and, and rummaging around cars because several cars had had uh, their, their glove boxes and everything opened. Now this is, I, I hate having to say that, but that happened in my neighborhood, I can't believe it. Um, and that got me thinking about this particular question when it was asked and, it, and yeah, absolutely. You could, as long as your Wi-Fi signal will reach to the car, you could put a mount in your car or just a blink camera, but a mount would be nice because they, they just use a suction cup or a sticky pad. You could Velcro a blink camera in there and as long as it can connect to your Wi-Fi signal, you can monitor what's happening in your car. In fact, if you use your cameras on a schedule, the camera will automatically turn on and turn off. So you could have one permanently mounted into your car when you left your home area, the Wi-Fi, of course the camera would not record or do anything for you and your system would notify you that a camera was online, but when you came back home at night to park, the camera would reconnect to your Wi-Fi and then 
show you what was going on in case anything happened. So that's a really great question and something that if you live in an area where you need that sort of thing, that's an excellent way to use it. So I got another question that says someone just bought a Blink camera and they wanted to know if they can monitor their children while they're at work and things like that. And Blink is not Ring. People sometimes want to know if you've got this instant answer capability like Ring does. And uh, no, it's not like Ring, but Blink does have two-way communication on the X-T2 module. You can talk through it. Now, sometimes the connection is delayed a little bit, especially if you are actually inside and you can hear the person trying to talk to your camera. You'll hear them through an open window before it will show up on your monitoring app. And sometimes that delay can take a few seconds. If you've ever worked in audio or video, you'll know that that latency is there and you try to work as hard as you can to get rid of it. My neighbors that have Ring um, don't seem to have any complaint about Ring as compared to when I show them the Blink capability for talking. I don't have Ring, so I can't compare it directly. But yes, lots of times I keep my gate locked, I keep my door locked. The only way to communicate with me when I'm not home is if I see the alert on my, uh, on my phone and then I choose to talk to you. There's no way to initiate a call on a Blink camera from the ground because the minute the Blink camera is triggered, it's automatically sending that information to the app. So if you're monitoring your phone or you get the notification, you can go right into it. And if someone's still knocking on your door, you can then, or knocking on your gate or whatever, you can then click the talk button on the app and say, hey, what's up, what can I help you with? And then they'll say whatever they want to say. So yeah, it works well for that. I don't know that I, I don't have any direct comparison to Ring for that capability, but for my uses, it's been great. Got another question, does it have a recording light? If so, can you turn that recording light on and off? And yes, Blink does have a recording light. It happens to be a blue recording light. Now that blue light can be turned off from the unit. You actually take the unit, open it up, and on the back there's a little switch. You can turn off the recording light or turn it on. I leave mine on for a very simple reason. I want someone to know, especially at nighttime, that they are being recorded when they walk into my area. So I just want them to know that the, the system is armed and going, <laughs> okay? So it can, it can act as a deterrent. But yes, you can turn it on and off, no problem. So here's a critical one. And I think I'm gonna read this and, and respond to a lot of that because I really enjoy it. I've got a, a comment on here that says, hey, I've been using the Blink X-T2 cameras since March of this year. And I must be the only customer that thinks they're garbage. But here's why I think that. First, the activity zones. Well, the, the zones activity are so basic that they don't really do anything for me. And I thought that it was only a nighttime reflection issue because the zones continue to reflect things. But um, until I dove deeper and realized that even during the day, both cars and pedestrians uh, passing in the grayed out activity zones era still trigger alerts. So yeah, the way that the camera sees these alerts is two ways. At nighttime, it's through heat, right, and reflection. And at daytime, it's through um, uh, actual movement of values of light, light intensity. So the camera can be fooled with false triggers by reflections of light that come in that are very bright, or even by passing clouds that come overhead and go from a bright contrasty day to a dark when the cloud comes over. If that happens uh, very quickly in rapid succession, you'll actually uh, get a false trigger. Now, like I said in my first video and like I reiterated in my second video, I was uh, too upset about this when I first got my Blink system. Blink has improved that over the time, but I also realized that you need two very important settings, the sensitivity and the length of time in between uh, uh, activations to be set. Once you figure out those sensitivity settings, that will help you quite a bit. I found also that pointing the camera down towards concrete, concrete is very reflective of light, will cause false triggers as well. So instead of pointing the camera down, like over midday, when the sun's gonna reflect light right back up to the camera and that, has, that could cause more false triggers, I try to point it across my area so it sees things that are moving left and right and not forwards and backwards and not straight down that way either. That's a very big pro tip for you out there. And if you are concerned about individual triggers every single time, um, that, that will trip you up. Another thing to think about that is that the triggers, the way that the camera works, if you're working, you're really looking at passive monitoring. This isn't active CCTV monitoring where you've got a person watching it, uh, the feed, and then gonna alert you if something happens. This isn't the sentry at the, at the perimeter of your castle that's waiting to send up the smoke screen to let you know something's going on or sound the alarm. This is artificial intelligence, AI-based com cloud computing that sends alerts to your phone. And it is constantly learning and updating, and it can be triggered and fooled. The easiest way, and I'll reiterate it one more time, 
to get your camera dialed in is to actually use the re-trigger time as well as the sensitivity. You can turn your sensitivity from nine all the way down to one, and that's just letting you know things about the size of a cat um, or smaller like the bunny rabbits or things the size of a person. One is bigger, nine is smaller, more sensitive. Um, and also the re-trigger time. So if something's still moving around or the clouds are still going over or whatever happens, it will re-trigger in a few seconds later. Once you get those settings dialed in, I just gotta say again, you're gonna be much, much happier with the system. But also, Blink's really looking for people, right? So if it's triggering over small things and you're getting an alert, sure, that can be um, an annoyance, but I've never had Blink miss a, the trigger of a person when doing something <laughs> to my home. And you can see my other videos for anecdotes and real personal experiences about that. But Blink has helped me out on at least two, possibly three occasions since I've had it in the past year and uh, 15 months since I've had it uh, to, to actually just keep my house protected. That's pretty cool. It hasn't missed those. And the last point that this guy wants to bring up is that he thought that it could be just his cameras but, or bad luck, but he did do some research and he said that hundreds of others have had the blurry issue with nighttime recording. All right, yes, hundreds of others, no. There's no issue with your blurry night vision camera. The sensor that Blink chose to use for night vision isn't the highest quality night vision camera you're gonna get in a set of tactical goggles that you can go out there and defend the country with. No, it's at most a $99 piece of equipment that sells for, on Black Friday, $39 or $49, and you can easily find on sales for around $79 or $89, $10 or $20 off. And so no, the sensor's not that great, but it in no way keeps you from being able to identify a person that's close enough to it in your area, or even see the people that are walking by at nighttime in your area. Now, if they're far away from the camera, of course, you won't be able to see who they are directly, but if someone's close enough to your home that they're going to be doing something that you need to identify them with, then it works just well. Anybody that comes to my gate or into my gate at nighttime, the camera sees without question. <laughs> no problem. The people that are 30 or 40 yards away, I think even you would have a pro uh, problem identifying them at nighttime with your own regular eyes. So it is true that it's blurry, but it's not a deal breaker. And it's not actually blurry, it's glowy. So it's a defined image that has a lot of glow or aura around it. Okay, that was a good comment right there. Let's go to another one. Another question. Wants to know how many cameras can you add? Well, I've only got two online. Uh, you can add, I believe, up to 10 cameras per sync module. And that'll lead me to another question. What do the sync modules do? Well, the sync modules allow for a group of cameras to be set up in zones. So if you had, let's say you lived in a place where you had three areas that you wanted to cover. One sync module would work with all three of those cameras if they were all on the same schedule. But let's say you wanted one camera by your door to be actively monitoring all day long. So now you've got a total of four cameras. Well, in this case, if you added that additional camera to the current sync module of the other three cameras, it would just monitor on the same schedule. So you would need a new sync module for that camera to log on to because the sync module is what contains the scheduling. So you would have zone one would be your three cameras that are all your perimeter areas, and zone two would be your other camera that stays on 24 seven. And that's actually a great idea. If you think that you'd like to have your door monitored 24 seven, so everybody that's coming and going from there, but you want your perimeter to be monitored only at nighttime, then uh, when it might be more vulnerable or more dangerous or you want to have that information, then you can have them come on at nighttime, go off during the daytime, and then you can have your door covered. You can continue that out up to, I believe, 10 sync modules, each with 10 cameras. So theoretically, you could support up to 100 cameras. From what I understand, I don't know anyone doing that, but it seems like it's a pretty good, good value to me. Hey, there's another great question coming in. It says, hey, if you have five cameras, can you turn off one of the cameras? Or well, could you put one inside the house and still have the other ones on? Yes. So in the Blink app, there is a great little button beside each of your cameras that looks like a person running, right? That means that the camera is actively monitoring for movement. When he's on, that little person is blue. When it's off, it turns gray. Tap it. You can turn off on any schedule of cameras that you have. You can turn off any individual camera. So if you wanted to turn, let's say you have your cameras on 24 seven and you wanna turn a camera off for whatever reason, you don't have to turn all the cameras off. You just touch that little running man icon beside each of the cameras 
And if you're unaware, you can name each of your cameras like I've got. So balcony, fence, yard, whatever, then you can turn off each one of those cameras and the other ones will remain active. Works the same way if you want to put these inside your house. Of course, I don't suggest putting them in your house when you're home uh, because do you want a camera and a mic inside of your house, in your house? <laughs> no, I don't. And um, when I'm gone, like on a vacation, if I'm leaving the house for a while, more than a day, then sure, I'll put one inside so that I could just monitor inside. And I also move the ones outside to a different position that makes my house more defensible, so to speak, just puts more, um, well, I guess, let me, let me rephrase that just so that you understand. When I'm home, I don't want my cameras turning on when I go out onto my deck. And I live in a condo, so I have a, I have a 20 by 14 size deck, 20 feet by 14 feet um, size deck, and then I've got a gate that surrounds that. So it's like my little, my little courtyard area. You've got to go through my gate to get to my door. When I'm home, I don't like my cameras pointing into the gate. I want to be able to walk out into my courtyard and do things without the cameras turning on. So I have my cameras positioned to see the yard and the fence line, anyone that would approach my home from any of the approachable angles. When I go on vacation or leave for longer than a day, I take one of the cameras down and I put it in front of my door. Now it's the camera that looks out over my door and it actually sees the entire area, right? So it'll see inside my fence because it's right there, but it can also see outside of my fence because it's about nine feet high. And it can see the entire yard. And I don't mind that it gets triggered when every car comes by because I'm gone from the house. I take another one inside of here and I put it up in a skylight area that I have that looks down into my home so that when someone comes onto the foyer, we can actually see if they go left, they go right, or if they go up the stairs, one of the three ways. So now I've got access of entry and internal house. I can also see what the cat's doing and if he's running around playing with anything, it's kind of funny. That works very well. So that's how I use a Blink system. And because the camera has no wires, it's as easy as just grab it here and put it there. I already put up the mounts. It comes with a mount, right? Each camera comes with one mount. So if you buy a two mount system, you get two mounts. If you buy a four mount system, you get four mounts, four camera system. You can buy the extra mounts, they're like 10 bucks. And you just put them wherever you want them. And if you don't have mounts, you could just Velcro them. Put a piece of Velcro on the wall and put a piece of Velcro on the back of the Blink and that would work too. Okay, that pretty much ends the questions. I have a couple of bonus questions at the end. I know this video is getting kind of long, but if you stuck around to watch it, you really want to know. Um, when I first, I guess the most important thing was I had different expectations when I first bought the system than I do now. I thought I was getting active monitoring when I first bought the system, which meant I, I felt like there would be some guy in the crime lab watching everything that happens. And that's what I was expecting. That's not what happens. It uh, does take a few seconds for you to get an alert on your uh, phone that there is an emotion event happening. Now, it's greatly improved. When I first got it, it could take 10 or 12 seconds, maybe even 15 seconds before a motion alert would happen, and that would be after the event took place, which means I could never go into the event actively. Currently, that's not the case anymore. Blink actually has a live feature right now that will take you directly into the event immediately, and that means that when the event happens, it only takes two or three, maybe four seconds for my phone to have the update saying, hey, there's a motion alarm at your home. Would you like to view all you have to do is tap that and next thing you know, you can see that motion event and you're active and you can talk. Now the delay, you know, the latency and the discussion could happen, but at least it's there as an option for you. Next question is, how do I feel about using Blink this entire time? I've enjoyed it. If you can't tell, I like the system. It's, it's no maintenance, okay, other than the batteries, no additional cost, and that's what it really gets me there. And it's all HD stuff, so it's all 1080p video. And you can't get better video than that right now, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm not gonna pay to have 4K. I'm not gonna buy an Arlo system. They're charging for their hosting. <laughs> These, Blink's got it. Blink's got it locked down. It's gonna do you a good job. And I'm happy that I've got the system. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this question and answer period and you didn't find it too boring. No anecdotes this time. Go watch some of the other videos. You can find them in the links below or up here somewhere. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side.